go ahead and turn on the recording. So do know that this is being recorded um, and that anyone across the district can watch it afterwards. So um, hopefully this will be informative and you'll be able to learn a lot. Um, this is generative AI, an educator's view. So um, while we're waiting just to see if anyone else pops in, go ahead and take a moment in the chat and share what are you hoping to learn today or what is a question that you have about generative AI? So depending on where you're at, pick which question works for you, answer that in the chat. And just as people are coming in, I'll give them a second to answer that. I'm gonna pull up my chat as well and interact with you. So you don't have to answer both, just pick one or the other. Yeah, Cynthia, very similar thing to me. <laughs> Looking to find out how schools and teachers are using it. Yep. Mm -hmm. I've heard some things. So we'll see about today how that goes, but awesome. Mine's the same. Similar. Perfect. <laughs> how can I help you as a teacher? The good news is, is that we're all on the same page. So I'm glad that we have similar goals and excited to meet those goals today. So, oh, yes, one more. Perfect. Awesome. I'm just letting people in. I knew it would take a minute. I know right now as the, I was just talking to Melinda as people are popping in that it's the end of the term right now. So it's a little crazy, I think for everybody. So as you're popping in, we are just answering these questions and talking about them. What are you hoping to learn? What are the questions is, is that, that you have about generative AI? So if you have one of those, or if you're watching the recording after, think about and reflect for yourself, what are you hoping to learn today? So if you just popped in, Chandra just popped in, feel free to type that in the chat. Otherwise we're gonna keep working through. So um, I've hit record, this is a recorded presentation. So just know that whatever you say on camera will show up um, for other teachers and that throughout this, that it's gonna give you a notice that says like, this is being a recorded, are you okay with that? So that's where this is going. It's posted on our Canyons U page and I'll give you the link, a link to that at the end of today. So our professional development norms here are, you can see them on the screen. We have be committed, be responsible, be respectful, and be safe. I want you to just take like one minute and think about a norm that you would like to focus on. When you've got one, either give me a thumbs up or nod your head so I know that we're ready to move on. Great. Thanks for the thumbs up. Awesome. Um, the one that I'm working on today is being responsible, actively participating. I'm leading this today, and so I'm working and interacting with you. So um, throughout this, if you'll mute your mic, this helps focus our presentation um, as a norm. If you do have a question and you want to like talk, I do want to hear it. Just raise your hand, or you can virtually raise your hand. Um, if you're comfortable, you can turn on your camera, leave it on. I love to see your faces. And if you aren't, you're welcome to turn it off. There's not an expectation. Or if you need to take a moment to stand up, go ahead and do that. Um, if you have a question or a comment, please type it in the chat. Or like I said, raise your hand. I'd love to answer it, answer your questions, especially if you have stories, things like that. So, um, so far looking like we're good on the mic check. Um, and if, like I said, if that changes for your camera comfortability, just turn it off as you go along. Here's our learning intentions today. So I was excited because I was seeing some of those questions. I was like, oh, this is good. This is what they want to know. So today we're differentiating generative AI from other AI types. So um, you may or may not have background knowledge that there are different types, but we're going to cover that kind of a base. We're going to look at um, Canyon School District's view of AI. So the actual guidebook that we have, we're going to look specifically at the teacher section. Then we're going to look at some AI tools for teachers. So I have three of them today for you. Um, one of them I'm going to model, and then three of them that you kind of explore for a minute a little bit on your own. And then hopefully you can develop a plan for further investigation. So that's kind of our four things. We have about 25 minutes, which is quick. But I want to make sure that you have some of those definitions and those resources, especially as you're moving forward. There's my icons that are linked appropriately. Sometimes that happens. 
So there's where we're headed today. These are our four goals. Um, throughout the presentation, I will kind of pause and just reflect and let you know kind of where we're at. Also know that these slides are available to you. So in the top right corner of the slide has a little QR code. So if you have a phone, you can scan that or you can use the bit.ly link bit.ly slash generative bite. So like bite sized. Um, that will be on every slide. So if you aren't sure to get it right now, you can grab it later. But if you're one of those people that likes to have it right in front of you, it will have that. Um, when we get to the portion where we go investigate some AI tools, I have clickable links for you. And so you're able to click through those if you have this link. So um, feel free to grab that. I will also put it in the chat. So bit.ly or bit.ly slash generative byte. So you can click or grab from where you need. You can view this presentation that way. Um, this connects to our MTSS framework with instructional content aligned with Utah core standards so, and standards-based instruction. So a lot of the pro programs that I'll show you today will fit and help you plan as a teacher to meet those goals of standards-based instruction. As a brief introduction, I'm Emma Moss. I know we've been through a couple of slides, but I am a teacher specialist. I am a digital teaching and learning specialist in our instructional support department. I previously was at Eastmont and just really excited to tell you about AI. I got to be part of the team that helped in our district develop some of these AI resources. And so just excited to share and share this with our teachers and help you use AI in a way that empowers both you and helps make learning more engaging for your students. So it's a little bit about me. Uh, this is kind of our agenda. So we've gone through our welcome, our norms. Um, we've selected an intention for the day um, and now we're on the agenda. So we're right on track. Uh, we're gonna talk about what generative AI is. We're gonna watch a short video and then CSD's view. Then the majority of the time I'm gonna spend looking at AI uses for educators, and then we'll wrap up, do resources. At the end, there's a feedback form, and I would love your feedback. Um, I love feedback, so please give me feedback on what you learned today and how that went, and we'll hopefully get you out of here right around 4.30. So that's where we're headed today. We're going to start with a video just to give us um, all sort of a sound um, introduction to generative AI. This is a short video. It's about a minute. Um, I'm going to play it on my end. If you have the slides on your own computer, you're welcome to play it. Just mute me um, and you can play it on yours. And then after watching and as you're viewing, I want you to answer this question. What is something you learned that generative AI can do? So from this, what's something it learned? I'm going to go ahead and play that. Whether you realize it or not, you're probably using AI in your daily life. Typically, AI focuses on analyzing data to be used for things like translations or predictions. But there's another type of AI that you might have learned of recently called generative AI. Generative AI uses algorithms to analyze existing data, such as text and images, to then make new content. Now you can use AI to create entirely new images with DALI and Bing Image Creator, or generate code suggestions with GitHub Copilot. But AI is getting put to work outside of work by helping you draft things like a dinner party invite or an itinerary for a four-day trip to Mexico City. To get technical, this all happens because large neural networks that work together like neurons to pass along information have been trained to analyze and recognize patterns within data. So let's try it. I, a person who entirely likes musical talent, asked Bing Chat to help draft lyrics about this topic. It searched for information on generative AI and on pop songs and created this. Generative AI can make anything from text to images to sound. It learns from data and patterns. And then it makes something new and profound. Okay, I'm back. Aside from catchy tunes, what can generative AI help you achieve? Imagine more with Microsoft AI. Okay, so take a second just from watching that. What is something from that that you learned that generative AI can do? If you'll type that into the chat. I love that you are having like Cynthia that you picked like writing songs and making itineraries, recognizing patterns, recognizing and summarizing. Um, I want to point out that this generative AI can do some of those. Um, sometimes we not 
like higher order thinking tasks, that summarizing, that creating that we're not used to. And I love that you guys picked up on those. So um, great things that AI can do. And there's things that it can do for you as a teacher as well. You I'm going to keep going. Um, this, we start with that generative AI, which is probably the one that you've heard about. Uh, just by raise of hand for those that you have your cameras on, how many of you have heard of ChatGPT? Okay, good. All of us. This is a uh, this is an example of a generative AI. So when we have a conversation about AI, oftentimes what comes out is this generative idea. But AI has been around, and there's other models of AI. So we also have a predictive AI, um, and that analyzes a data set to learn and predict future events or decisions. So, for example, I really like baking shows on Netflix. And so when a new baking show comes out, Netflix is like, you should watch this. That is a predictive AI. It's taking a pattern and it's saying, oh, you've watched every single baking show on Netflix. You probably would like this. Um, and so that's what it's doing. And it's utilizing that data set. A reactive AI is even before that. And anytime you've heard of like adaptive testing or like our rise testing and things like that, it responds to that data um, and learn from it. So like Alexa, or if you've seen your students, I have an Alexa, um, if you've seen your students play on chess.com, um, things like that, where it's responding and reacting, it's not predicting from those patterns, um, is also an AI model. So if you were to take a second, I want you to look at this graphic, how would you explain, how are these types different? Like if you had to explain for your students, like they come across this, how are they different? Take a second, write that in. How are they different? Okay, so there's an agreement there, just simplify and create, predict, or respond. Um, I love, Cynthia, that you're agreeing. You're like, hey, I'm. that was what I was typing as well. Um, just in very simple terms, it's a great way to differentiate them, just making sure that we have an understanding of that, that if you think about it in those terms, then you're able to kind of decipher. So let's kind of check where you are. I just want you to silently reflect Spotify's next song suggestions. Is that a reactive, a predictive, or a generative? Just going to give you 30 seconds and then we're going to look at another example. Okay, good. Yeah, that would be a predictive AI. Great. Uh, rise testing. Reactive, predictive, generative. And when uh, she said reactive, okay, reactive. Yep, it's adapting. Great, thanks, Chandra. <laughs> so just about to ask why. And yes, it's adapting to what students are putting in. Okay, Google Bard. This is Google's version of AI. Okay, perfect. So that is a generative type. Seeing those come in quickly, yep. So if you're using those simple terms, this kind of helps you determine um, when you're looking at AI, what is it doing and understanding that all of these three models are working from data. So that's a really key point is that um, I think sometimes we have this perception in because of like science fiction or ways we've interacted that this generative AI is like a tiny robot, but really all of these are making decisions based off of data, which I think is a really important thing. From that, since we have that understanding, um, I wanna take a second and look at the view of AI for um, Canyons District. So if you, I'm gonna put in the chat a link, or if you have the slides, this is clickable. But if you go to canyonsdistrict.org slash family connections, um, there's a place where you can go to artificial intelligence. 
I can actually put the direct link in there into the guidebook. I'm going to send that. So that will take you directly there. I want you to just take two minutes, kind of explore, look through it, get a feel for it. And then we're going to look at a sp specific section of it, um, the one for educators. But I want to give you just, like I said, a minute or two. Just look through this if you aren't familiar with this or have not seen this before. Um, a little bit of background, this was designed for all of our stakeholders in Canyons. Um, so educators, there's a student piece, there's a family piece. Um, and questions for leadership. And it's pretty short, it's on 10 or 11 pages uh, with the cover, but just kind of gives you some overview. So like I said, just take one or two minutes, kind of look through it, see what you think, and then we'll look at one specific section. If you have thoughts or wonderings while you're looking through it, you're also welcome to add those into the chat. Okay, take about 30 more seconds to finish looking through. If you're at home and you're watching this recording afterwards, um, these links are going to be available within the slide deck. So you're welcome to click on those or go to this website and feel free to take as much time as you need if you're watching the recording afterwards. Okay. From that, we're going to look at this specific section. So if you have the slides in front of you, you can read it on the slide, or you can go down to this view of AI for Canyons educators. So we're going to look at this specific section of educational learning. Um, we've kind of, this view of AI is an acronym. So it's that value of understanding, which we've looked at. Um, there's some inf information in there about implementing safety for students, but right now we're just looking at tools for you as an educator. And so I'm going to take a second and look at this educational learning section. So if you'll read this and then in the chat, what do you notice or wonder about after reading? And then I want you to go through and as you see other people put notices or wonder, like those that you relate to. So there's a little button on the bottom that has a reaction and you can like those that you relate to. And I'm gonna do the same.
I am loving these answers coming in. Go through and react. Um, there's a little like um, add reaction button below the comments. Go through and react to some of those things that others are saying in the chat. If you're at home and you're watching, um, I would encourage you to talk to someone around you about what you've read and share that out. But here, um, go through, kind of read those comments, react to them, react to what you think or relate to. And loving this one, I think this is a really important question that about how difficult uh, teaching our students the difference between plagiarism with AI and using it as an appropriate tool. I think that's something that comes up a lot. Um, and I think it's something that uh, all of our stakeholders um, have expressed concerns about. I think it's really important to um, set those guidelines and parameters with your students and help them see like how this can enhance their learning. For example, like instead of just using chat G GPT to write an essay, you can use it to brainstorm or help filter big ideas or use it as a writing partner and have a discussion discussion with um, it as you're working through the writing process versus just um, responding or using it to cheat. And I think helping your students see that line, there's a really great resource that I can um, send out to you afterwards and link in the slides um, from Ditch That Textbook that has like a continuum to help your students define that line in the lesson plan that I really enjoy. So thanks for liking those and going through and interacting with each other as you work through it. So we worked through two of our learning intentions. My check boxes are a little bit off, but we figured out how to differentiate and then access that CSD's view so you can go back. Um, I want to go ahead and investigate some of those generative AI tools. We have about 10 minutes and then give you like the last two minutes to develop a plan so we can hit all of those learning goals for today. So the one I want to show you today is called Magic School AI. Um, this is one that you can use for teachers. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in. Um, this Magic School for AI has not been approved for use with students yet. I wanna make that clear. <laughs> um, that is done as Chandra brought up through the Learn platform. So if you approve a tool through the Learn platform, then you're able to use it with students. But on a teacher end, you can use things like this to help you improve your instruction. I know at the beginning, that was some of the questions like, how can I use it? And what I love about this tool is that it's specifically designed for educators. So there are things in here, for example, um, you can do a project-based learning generator. There's a choice board generator, which I used all the time, um, a YouTube video summarizer or a question generator. So if you're having your students, you know, best practice isn't just to like let them sit there and watch a video, but to pause and have discussion about what they're learning and have a purpose for learning. There is now a YouTube video question generator. It'll watch the video for you. Um, one of my personal favorites right here is this rubric generator. So you can have AI write a rubric for an assignment you're creating. And the great thing about this and what I love about generative AI is that at the center of it is still you. You as a teacher, as a human, you are still the one that's making decisions with your expertise on how to use things. So for example, if we went into this rubric generator, um, Melinda, can I ask you to unmute and give me some topics for this? of what would be a good one? Um, for the generator? Yeah, throw some out for me. Thanks for letting me call on you. Of course, um, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking though, just like general topics. Give me a standard or like, yeah, a general math topic. I know that you're- Okay, in. how about being able to multi multiply two, digi two digit numbers? Okay, multiply two digit numbers. Students, tell my students, when I used to teach that I can spell, but as soon as I get in front of people, I can't anymore. Um, do you want to call it, we'll call it homework practice. So we got a sure. something and then an assignment description. What are they doing or? They are testing their knowledge of multiplication. Multiplication. Okay. With two digit numbers. That makes sense. Okay. Very simple one. Um, obviously you would play with it. Um, let's do a five point scale and I don't have any additional customization. We're just going to hit generate and see what it comes up with. It's thinking. All right, here we go. Ooh. Okay. My screen's a little small, so I'm going to stretch this out so we can see the rubric here. There we go. All right. So this put it on a five point scale. 
accuracy, efficiency, organization, explanation, and application. So it's shorted it into categories for you. Um, it gave you what those criteria should look like. Give it a second. Melinda, how do you think it did? <laughs> I think it did a pretty good job for the amount of time that it took to create it. That's awesome. Fair enough. Um, so, I mean, it may not be perfect. And obviously, again, you as a teacher are going to use your expertise to generate. Thanks for letting me do that live. Um, but looking and giving you a starting point, which is what I love. I think sometimes as an educator, I'm like, okay, how do I start this? It's like our students, when they you give them a sentence and you're like, write this thing. But without that sentence frame, they're like, I don't know how to get started. Sometimes I look at generative AI tools here as like the sentence frame for teachers starting to do X, Y, and Z, um, because it's just getting started with those ideas, which I think is really fun. So that's the rubric generator. It's it's one that I think I struggled with a lot as a teacher. And so to see it do something so quickly was like, oh, I can modify that so fast. Um, there's also a colleague song generator, which I can attest to is hilarious. Um, maybe not for your students, but could help. Um, there's support intervention, a syllabus generator. There's tons of things in here. Um, it's like I said, it's a really fun one to use and has a lot of things that are teacher specific. So um, I'm gonna give you like five minutes. I'm gonna put these links in the chat just to give you a second to explore. And then um, I know that's not a very long amount of time. Cynthia has raised her hand. Cynthia, go ahead. <laughs> I have just one question. So with the um, magic school, can yeah. you go back and after you generate that rubric, can you go in and have it edited again? Or do you need to download it and edit it yourself? Does well, that allow you to keep editing within magic yeah. school? That's what I'm yeah. asking. It does allow you to regenerate. And sorry, there's a little bit of sun. So I'm going to move myself just a little bit so you can see me. Um, yes, it does allow you to regenerate. And it will, so you can say um, in that one, like, I like this column or this column, but regenerate this section. So I really like that feature um, just because sometimes you're still tweaking, right? Several things go through iteration. So yes, you can do that. That was an awesome question. Um, yeah, going to give you like three or four minutes. Um, this one is called Conquer. I think that's how you say it, but it's creating assessments. So it does online quiz generation. So if you struggle generating test questions is a great one. Um, and it's just conquer.ai. There's also magic school AI, which is the one I just showed you. And then this Canva magic switch. So this is built right into Canva and Canyon school district has Canva accounts for everyone, their education accounts. And um, if you need help signing up for those, let me know afterwards, I can help you. Um, but they have a magic switch so they can redesign, transform, translate your designs. They have a translate feature. That's great. Um, so those are the couple of the three that I wanted to show you. So like I said, take like three minutes, kind of click through, log in, explore, see what you think in those three minutes, which I know is a short amount of time. Um, and then we're going to make a quick plan for something that you might like to explore further after we're done. So.
take about 30 more seconds just to wrap up exploring and then we'll finish up. All right, if you'll just take a second, share in the chat, what is your plan for exploring more about generative AI or how will you incorporate AI into your teacher preparation from what you saw today? So we looked at those differences between generative AI. You could say, hey, I wanna know more about that or exploring more about this CSD's view. We also investigated a couple of generative AI tools. Maybe your plan is to spend 30 minutes looking at Magic School AI to see how you can streamline your workload. Um, or, and then that last one here is what you're doing is you're developing a plan. What are you gonna do moving forward from what you learned today? Just add those to the chat. Yeah, awesome. Loving these plans. Organization, using them to help you write more excite, concise things. Choice board creation, yes. And generating ideas for STEM, awesome. Yay, okay, I'm so excited. Um, here's some resources, they're linked in the slides. There's tons of AI tools, so this one has 30. Um, and then some tips for school leaders. Just remember that as, as we end, um, technology alone is not enough. At, at the center, you need you. <laughs> as an educated professional who cares and loves about your students, uh, AI is another technology tool that really is going to, to change education, but also at the heart of education is, is our students and our teachers. And so um, thank you for being here. In the chat, I put a link to this slide specifically. It has the bite-sized PDM credit form, so you can click that and get credit for being here today. There's also a feedback form, um, totally anonymous. It'll ask you to put what PD you attended, but that helps me be a better presenter. And if there's things that you're like, I wish I would have had more of this, or um, I really liked this, I would love to hear that from you. So thank you for attending today and for being here. If you have any questions, I'll hang out for a minute. Um, otherwise, I'm going to stop the recording. And thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thanks, Emma.